Okay, here we are for part two of the series on creating a print cut image from a transparent TIFF and uh, we're going to be jumping into Flexi here and I'll show you real quick how to, how to create a cut contour for this. I'm not actually going to go into depth on how to manipulate the nodes and things like that. I think in the future we'll go ahead and do a complete video just on uh, creating vectors within Flexi. Um, and I believe also with the VersaWorks, we're going to kind of glaze over with the settings and, and how to actually use that tool until I can get uh, screen capture software for that machine. Um, and then we'll do a complete video on that. And uh, so here's part two in the series. Okay, so we got Flexi sign open here. This is the, the newest version, version 12, that runs off the cloud. Um, we're going to go ahead and import the image that we made that has the stroke on it to create our cut contour that's the FCC stands for four cut contour that's what I like to label mine as and we're gonna go ahead and place that on the screen and the next thing we want to import is the work path that we created in Photoshop so I'm gonna go ahead and select that remember we called that WP for work path and then place it somewhere on the screen and using the fill stroke editor here what we're gonna do is go ahead and give it a solid fill and we don't want it to be black. Let's go ahead and make it red. I had planned on this being red. And then we'll go ahead and make it a wireframe so now we can see through it. Next thing you want to do is take your select tool here and sweep across both images and hit Control 5 to align both centers. Uh, the other way to get there is to go arrange, align, and both centers. And you can see the hotkey is Control 5 for that. Uh, now the reason why our, our vector didn't line up exactly perfect is because of the drop shadow at the bottom of the snake that we didn't completely get rid of. So what we'll need to do here is select just the vector. I may have to click away here. Select just the vector, which I can't quite get. There we go. And we'll just move it over by hand till it's close. And because we're going to have to go in and go all the way around the snake all at once, it's, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. We'll just zoom in a bit here and get it semi-close. Now the next thing we want to do, I'm going to zoom out here. I'm using Control minus to zoom. <clears throat> I'm going to get my point tool here and make sure that we've got that image selected and I will probably be able to... Actually, I guess you can't select it with that. What we're going to do is select the vector and go arrange group and ungroup it all. Make sure that it's all ungrouped. They won't allow you to anymore. And then we're going to compound the image. And what that does is it will actually create the negative areas out here in the gaps that we need. And now we're going to go back to a wireframe. So this vector shape now is ready to be labeled a cut contour if it was in the correct shape. So the next thing I need to do is the tedious process of going around the entire image here and and uh, putting the nodes in, and the, the vector shape exactly where I want to. And this is going to be a, a simple... Here, I'll show you another trick I do real quick. Um, if you get the node editing tool here sweep select the entire image and then I come in here and right click and uh, come down and go smooth point because that way it'll round everything and you won't end up with uh, hard corners in places the, the smooth point forces the the line to actually flow and, and move in a nice arc and so then you just make your arcs as small as you need to and that way you can get a nice smooth arc around the corner of his teeth for instance instead of having a perfect point which would start peeling up after time if uh, the size of the tip was too small. So you keep that in mind when you're making these radiuses around these small areas with cut lines is to go ahead and, and round them off, get a nice... It's better to have it a little bit fat and have it not peel off. Uh, it may not look as good, but longevity is better than uh, it looking great and falling off immediately. So I guess while I come in here and adjust all of these nodes I won't make you sit through all of that uh, let's go ahead and cue the time-lapse okay guys sorry about the time-lapse there this actually ended up taking me a lot longer than I thought it was going to uh, if you notice here I 
there's about a million nodes going around there and having to travel around each one of these scales and get every single small undulation in the in the snake's body that was about a nightmare so uh anyways i haven't figured out how to do a time lapse that lasts 24 hours yet so uh, <laughs> the good news is is that now this vector is already made and it'll come with the snake whenever you buy it so you guys won't have to struggle through that one um, but <clears throat> So essentially, I, I just went in by hand and adjusted all the different nodes and uh, got him dialed in there. You can see we, we followed the, uh, the yellow line perfectly all the way around, and that should give us our exact two-pixel bleed that we were looking for. So the next thing we need to do is get this ready to export and go to the printer. So. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this file that we used to make the cut contour with. And we'll grab the Don't Tread on Me 3 print file. This is the one that we made the, the stroke. And this is another reason why I label all my stuff and what it's for is day to day. You don't have to, to worry about remembering which one's which and this and that. It'll tell you right there in the file name. So uh, we're going to move this to the back so it's behind the vector that we made. Then I'm just going to get it close here. And then we'll zoom in by his teeth. The, the idea here, whenever you're trying to, by hand, go in and, and move this vector in, which we wouldn't have to do that. We could use the alignment tools um, if it was a perfect deal uh, vector here. But we, we're cutting off the drop shadow that we didn't quite erase completely in Photoshop. So, so now that I'm close, I'm going to zoom in to an area of the file if you can to where you can see three different sides of the print image. So we can see the left side, the right side, and the bottom in this view here. And that will allow you to use the nudge tools, just the arrow keys on your keyboard, to uh, nudge this into place. And then we'll go check and make sure that we got it dialed in just right. from the fourth side. So now that we've gone in there, I'll come up here and check this corner here. And that looks like we're falling just about right. Might go down a hair. Maybe right one hair. And then I'll uh, come back in here and just double check the teeth just to make sure that it still looks good. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so now we've got our cut contour on top of the uh, snake here. I'm going to select just it and you notice how it got a little brighter and there's not a, a line all the way around outside the edge. That's that's where it's telling you exactly what it's selecting when you do that. So grab the line, go arrange, make sure that it's ungrouped. It, it won't allow you to ungroup if it is. Then make sure it's a compound. This is all in order to create your cut contour. And so once you've got it ungrouped and it's a compound, now we can go to make cut contour or contour cut, it says. So uh, now if we zoom in here, that line should have turned gray. In Flexi, it'll turn gray like that. When, and that's to signify that it's a cut contour. So now we've got that adjusted. We're going to go arrange, group, and then group this so that now the cut contour and the print image can't move away from each other. There's no chance for those to separate. And then we're going to export it as our Don't Tread On Me 3 and I call it Print Cut Ready. And that's going to be our, our master file here. So you can save it as an a, a Illustrator file, an EPS file, a PDF will work. Uh, the one file format that I've found that, that actually does the best at giving you editing capabilities later on is EPS. Like if you try to make your print cut image into a PDF and then open the PDF back into your, like let's say you messed up on the cut contour or for whatever reason, uh, you can open up the PDF back into your vector program expecting to be able to manipulate the vector but because it was made into a cut contour it's no longer editable. It doesn't even allow you to see it anymore. It's just part of the uh, the postscript, the uh, the actual coding of the file now. And so I like to say mine is an EPS. Um, it is a little bit bigger file, but uh, again, it, and it lets you edit it in the future. And so I'm just going to save that to my desktop. 
and the next thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and shrink this down to the to the size that is actually going to be printed uh, for whatever job that you have. And because remember, we did this at full scale, and that's another reason why it took so long to make that cut contour. It was uh, quite the process. So we're going to go. to our design central here and this is going to give us a, our width and as long as you have proportional checked it'll go ahead and scale the width accordingly to the height and so if you notice like the height of our snake is actually uh, a lot closer to the edge of the document so it's a more gen uh, accurate measurement versus the edges of the snake are quite a ways from the edge of the document so there you know it's going to be a little bit more difficult to measure your exact width so if you know your width and your height what you'll do is, in, in a case like this where the document's hanging way over like that, is uh, you'll just go ahead and adjust it to the height that you want, and whatever the width ends up being, uh, you'll just have to live with. It is wide out there, so essentially it's not going to print anyway, so it's not really that important. And I think we're going to output this at uh, something small. I'd, I'd like to show you guys how to print this. We're just going to go ahead and go through the whole process in this series. Um, and. Uh, go from zero to print cut ready to here it is coming off the printer we'll go ahead and laminate it and then we'll go right into um, uh, actually cutting the image and the thing is is that when when you've got a, a giant piece like this that's 69 and a half by 79 and a half inches uh, the the bleed on this the two pixel bleed on this is uh, is fairly decent that's that's plenty of bleed but once you start shrinking it down that number of pixels and that that margin is actually going to shrink and uh, at the same time it should make it easier for your printer to be accurate because it's such a small scale it doesn't have a chance to skew and things like that uh, but the uh, the main thing is is that you're gonna lose some bleed as you shrink it down but hopefully as long as you did everything correctly it should be no problem and uh, make sure you're grouped before you go ahead and, and start scaling this because you can really get off quickly and it's very difficult to get back to the exact size see there I didn't we're not grouped actually I think uh, we're gonna step back it looks to me as though I've made two vectors I'm going to have to go in here and check. Nope, just one. And sometimes that'll happen. I've, I've had uh, several vectors come out of Sign Lab before. And uh, I was just using Control Z to step back there. Uh, the vectors coming out of Sign Lab every once in a while will, will have a, a double up where everything's doubled. And I'm not sure why it does that, if it's a, it's a glitch in the program or something that I'm doing. But. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you don't double up your vectors because if you do it'll go back and cut it twice and uh, you have a chance of scoring the backing and all kinds of bad things can happen there especially if it gets off during its second cut so we'll go ahead and uh, group this and then we're going to resize it down to something like 10 inches tall and then we'll zoom in really close and just make sure that our vector stayed where it's supposed to be. Yep, everything looks good. So now we can file export. And then what I would do is call this, uh, it means how it's the exact size and scale and everything that the job's made for. I would go ahead and make a folder for the customer and uh, just name it the customer and then put a date on there too. So let's call it Joe's Snake. And then uh, the date today is 3-7-17. Uh, whatever. So uh, when we come back, guys, I'll be in front of VersaWorks, and we'll go ahead and get this thing set up to print. All right, guys, that concludes our flexi part. Um, next up is going to be part three, and that's going to be us actually importing this file into VersaWorks and then running it through the printer. So uh, I'll see you there.